Dr. Molly Serlip and Dr. Robert Poston, thank you for being here. You're welcome. Thank you for having us. Well, let's begin with you, uh, Dr. Serlip. If you could tell us a little bit about your experience here at the University of Arizona. You've been here approximately three years now? Yes. Um, I'm an interventional cardiologist. This is my third year here at the University of Arizona. And basically, my job is to see patients with uh, coronary disease, and I fix their coronary arteries by stenting. And Dr. Robert Poston, you recently joined the University of Arizona. Can you tell us about that, please? Yeah, I took over for Jack Copeland's position as the Chief of Cardiovascular and Thoracic Surgery at the University. I've been there since January. Okay, so we're here to talk about robotics and heart surgery. Tell us a little bit about that. How does it all uh, connect? We use robotics when we want to get into parts of the body without having to do a major morbid incision. So that chest cavity is something that normally you can only get into by cutting open the breastplate, the sternal bone. So this is an opportunity now to go in between the ribs using robotic instruments, which allows you to have all the precision you'd have with your own hands because the robot has a console that you control with this precise instrument. And you are working with him on that as a team? Tell us about that, please. Yes, this is actually kind of a unique uh, opportunity here in, in Tucson and in, actually in the country. And what we do is we sort of combined our two fields, and he will robotically um, do a uh, bypass grafting, and anything that he doesn't do, then I can do as a stent. So this keeps it minimally invasive and um, allows us not to have to do a full uh, incision, as he was saying before. Uh, tell us a little bit about that, please, doctor. When it comes to the size of the incision and what that means for the patient uh, using the robotics versus the traditional methods. Yeah, the incision is going to heal up fine, even if you have the big one. But the question is how much time it takes. The smaller incisions heal faster, and they have less risk of infection. So those are the two main advantages of doing it without the big external incision. Essentially, we're having the same operation. It's just a matter of doing it through a smaller approach, and that's the purpose of the robot. The collaboration with the cardiologist, Dr. Serlip, is to allow us to expand this to a broader number of patients, not just patients that we could do one or two bypasses on with the robot, but now people that need three or four vessels taken care of, we do in combination. And also the time that the patient will be in the hospital is reduced because of that. Can you tell us about that as well? Well, um, that's probably more something that Dr. Poston can address, but for a bypass surgery, I guess the minimal stay is six days. Mm -hmm. And for a hybrid approach um, or just his uh, robotic approach uh, is more around four days. Okay, so the patient gets to stay uh, less time and they recover faster. Is that the case as well? Yeah, everything's about half of what it would be with the traditional approach. So instead of six days in the hospital, it's three or four instead of six to ten weeks of recovery time at home to get back into the swing of things and get normal, it takes about three or four weeks. And how does it work? It's hard to imagine for some people to say, wow, heart surgery with a, a robot. Is it a big thing, that yeah, instrument, yeah, or a small instrument? Big. How does it work? <laughs> yeah, and it's, uh, it's the size of uh, probably of Dr. Serla, about that size, not that she's big. but uh, And it, it, it has instruments that go in between the ribs. We use ports to do that. And the instruments just slide right down the ribs, it, right in between the ribs. It would be the same instruments that we would use, like a cautery, a knife, a scissors, a forceps. It's just now it's going through the ribs, and we're controlling it from almost like a video game console at another spot in the operating room. Instead of being right up on top of the patient and having your hands directly touch the patient, you control the robot, and the robot directly controls the patient. And how does that uh, all different? Uh, how is that different from traditional operations, the ones that a lot of people are familiar with? Well, for the surgery part, is he would be there at the table with a, a large incision and you know doing it by hand with you know multiple instruments and stuff. the The unique thing about this is that he does his part with a little robot, and then I do my part with stenting. So it negates the fa um, of having to take vein grafts from the legs. So instead of vein grafts, they have my stents. And, and we were talking about that prior to this interview. The fact that cooperation is really important here. Tell us about, a little bit about how that team works and makes it all possible, please. Right. So as technology advances, so does cardiothoracic and interventional cardiology approaches. And what we're realizing is that many of these procedures are going to more minimally invasive and that our fields are getting closer and closer together. 
And in the past, yes, you know, cardiologists talk to CT surgeons, but it was more when I can't do something, then I'll send it on to him. Well, now we have joint conferences. We talk daily. We go over a lot of the patients. As new technologies are coming down, we already have this installed so that, um, that we can give the, the patients the best um, therapy. And doctor, you wanted to stress the importance about patients knowing about their options. Uh, tell us about that, please. Well, I'd, I'd like to follow up on Dr. Shirley's sure. point about the cardiologist and the cardiac surgeons collaborating. This is what patients want. When Ted Kennedy had his brain surgery, he had all the different surgeons and the oncologists getting in the, down at his compound in Cape Cod talk about it. And, and so this is an opportunity now where you can say that the cardiologist and the cardiac surgeons are working together. That's the type of patient that tends to be very satisfied with their hospital experience, knowing that two separate teams have thought through their case and it's not just you're applying a hammer to the nail that the patient is. And so also though, the, the other point I wanted to make about that was that, that patients oftentimes don't hear about this option if it's not provided at the hospital that they might end up at. So that's why I really appreciate, I think Dr. Sherlock and I appreciate the opportunity to come and talk about it and just let patients know. I mean, they don't necessarily have to have this option. There's patients that I've talked about this approach and their cardiologist recommended the conventional strategy and, and they went on and had that and they did well and that's fine but I think that we don't want somebody to undergo the traditional approach for the only fact that they didn't hear about this option and otherwise would have been a good candidate that to me is a tragedy okay great well it's always a good thing to ask questions of your doctors thank you very much for being here and good luck All right, thank you, thank you.